Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on Politics Today on Channels Television, the nation's news leader. The breaking news that we are following for you, House of Representatives, will reconvene next week, Tuesday, August the 14th. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Yusuf Lassen, disclosed this today in Abuja, the nation's capital. He says the agenda will primarily be the presidential budget request to fund INX operations for the 2019 elections. The National Assembly had been on recess since July the 24th. The breaking news, uh, House of Representatives to reconvene next week, Tuesday. So let's continue with the conversation we are having for you, very much related to this matter, the 2019 elections, and what your right and what you should be looking at critically at that crucial election year. So some youths are saying, more youths must participate and political parties must give room for youths, younger people to participate. They are the not too young to run bill passed into law. Now they are saying youths are not too young to run and the space must be provided to them. On the panel tonight on the program, we have the press secretary to the INEC chairman, Mr. Rotimi Oyekomi in our Abuja studio, a co-convener of the Not Too Young to Run campaign, Chioma Agwegbo, and the national coordinator of Na election monitor, Abiodun Ajijola. Thank you so much, gentlemen and ladies, for your time on the program. Not every day we have a woman on the program, but when we have one, we will celebrate them. So let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Agwegbo. With what we're seeing today, we had the not too young to run bill signed into law. And a lot of people will say, well, that's fine. Very rare, but it's good. Uh, you cannot just say that you sh the, the young people should be given a chance. They should be fighting for it. Why are young people uh, not going to be fighting for it? Nobody's going to leave the space for them, is it? Thank you very much for that question. Um, I believe that our advocacy is not, you know, there's no end to advocacy. And young people are fighting for it. When we went out on the streets on Wednesday, the 8th of August, we had more than a thousand young people on the streets going from political party to political party. And we visited both the major parties and the smaller parties, asking them for three things. One, to give a set number of seats to young people. There are currently about 990. 990 seats, um, constituency seats, and we're asking for just 298. We're asking that these seats be reserved for young men, young women, young people with disabilities. The second thing we're asking for is for a marked reduction in the cost of nomination forms for these, um, for these positions. And this, this reduction will will reduce the exclusivity that young people face when it comes to purchasing nomination forms, etc. And the final thing we asked for of all the political parties that we visited was there should be the true principles of democracy should reflect in their primaries. So we said no to the imposition of candidates. We said no to consensus candidates. We said no to things that, do, that negate the course of democracy. And these are the things that we're fighting for. And we're not fighting, as it were. We're saying to the political parties that if they do not give young people tickets, young people will not give them votes. And the simple reason is because young people currently make up more than 55% of the electorate in this country. As the chief press secretary was saying, that number will definitely have increased you know, with the over 11 million who have registered between 2017 and today. And so we're saying to the political parties, make room for young people who are competent. Again, I must be very clear that we're not asking them to give them these tickets. We're asking them to allow a level playing field so that people who are competent, who have capacity, and who have the innovation necessary to move our country forward can emerge through democratic party primaries. Right. That's uh, what we're uh, asking for. Choma, it's going to be interesting how young people will make this happen. Uh, this fight that we see on the street, how that will culminate into action for 2019. That is one very important part of this whole conversation if you do not have the permanent voter card forget it you cannot vote that is the basic prerequisite for voting in nigeria so there are millions of uh, those permanent vocal cards there are lying uncollected across the country let me ask uh, mr biodu adijola he has a lot of figures and uh, the data there what what more do we know about this issue of uh, permanent voter cards and the uncollected ones you have your fears for 2019 with all of these uh, ones that are lying on collected? Thank you, um, John. Well, you know, first of all, if you look at where we started from, 
we've, we've been able to get, as of June, about 9.7 million. But I think now, um, you know, we heard that from the Chief Press Secretary to the next chairman, that it's about 11.4 million. So I, I think that's a good effort to have 11.4 million additional people on the voter register that have come to register. But as you said, the, the key issue now is the collection of the PVC, because no matter how many register, if you don't have your PVC, you cannot get register, you cannot vote on election day. Um, so I think, I, I wouldn't say fear, but I, I think at this point, if reg, PVC re, uh, registration, CVR, will come to an end on the 17th of August, although there are some groups that have been clamoring for an extension of that. But I mean, that or whether it's extended or not, it still has to come so that INEC can do all the back end processes and ensure that PVCs are ready. But for my, me, my greatest concern is that we still have over seven, over 7 million cards from 2015 that have not been collected. The collection rates for the cards that have been available since 2000 and um, since May this year, May 21st this year, is much significantly higher than, than what we have from the cards left from now, 2015. Let's put it into so perspective. I, Which states are you more afraid of? in terms of this collection. Where do we have the most PVC lying on collected in the nation? Well, there are two types of PVCs. So we have PVCs from 2015, pre-2015, and PVCs from 2017 CVR. So if you look at PVCs from the pre-2015, the bulk of uncollected PVCs is from the southwestern part of the country, specifically Lagos, Ogun State, and a few others. This form the bulk of, 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 of that, where you, you can still find, like Lagos, I think, has over about 1.3 or 1.4 million cards yet to be collected from 2015. Uh, but when you look at... Because of our the, time. Uh, well, I like now know where the work is. Voters now know where the, uh, the bulk of the work is. But let's close the program with 30 seconds submission from the CPS to the INEC chairman. With all of these uh, of, uh, cards that are uncollected, what is INEC going to do? And the fears of Nigeria also about the issues of uh, the transmission, electronic transmission of uh, results. In 30 seconds, if you could address these issues. Thank you very much, Chiu. Uh, this, uh, what the media is doing is really helping the Commission to bring more awareness about the need for those who have registered to collect uh, their PVCs. We are stepping up uh, that uh, media awareness, uh, and uh, we are also soliciting the assistance of all stakeholders. Uh, we are engaging with uh, traditional rulers and religious leaders. Uh, if you go to churches and mosques these days, you find that uh, the imams and the, and the pastors are asking their members uh, to, to go and collect their PVCs. And we also have other stakeholders. Citizens are really taking these issues up uh, privately. A lot of people right. are partnering with INEC to ensure that people collect their PVCs. Uh, the social media is above, uh, above with, with, with this awareness. And we will continue to weigh in on whatever All we right. can to create the awareness. It's really not very uh, impressive that so far uh, we, we have just right. about we need, half we need a million to go because we are out of time, unfortunately. But I guess we'll find more time to talk about it because this is important. The PVC is a passport to vote. Stay with us on China Television. Some of the breaking news that we have for you about the resumption of the House of Representatives next week, Tuesday. But that's our show today. I must thank my guests tonight on the program. Roti Mio Yokomi, CPS Tuana Chairman, Chama Aguebu, and Biodun Ajijala. Thank you. That's our show for today, everyone. I'm Shiwa Kimbalo. Bye-bye.